Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Uh, Iko is still preparing our lovely meal, so we are going to go visit this town's sacred site, the Eidolon Wall. And presumably, we are going to learn more about the summoners and their Eidolons. But not before we return to the kitchen for an active time event. Uh, we're just counting the guests for dinner, including the party who just arrived, Iko herself, and all the Moogles. So we need to select 11 people. And I did just hit X. This is an old Japanese PlayStation game, which means for us in the West, <laughs> who are used to X for confirm and circle for backing out of something, that's all switched around. Uh, and switching back and forth between like a lot of different games. And this rather old game, uh, that does mess my fingers up very bad, but not as bad as when I played Metal Wolf Chaos for the channel and had Metal Wolf inverted controls drilled into my hands for everything else I played for several weeks. And hey, we saw Akina fall into the river last time, and now we have fished them out. And we will see what becomes of that after we get done visiting the Eidolon Wall, which is another one of those restricted zones that we couldn't pass through to earlier. Uh, so Morrison is going to relieve Moko of their guard duties so that we can go and visit the wall and maybe learn a few facts. Uh, but first, Zidane has the bright idea that, hey, Dagger might be interested in this, so we're going to go get her. She's been out here on the path into the city, uh, just kind of, hmm, keeping to herself, pondering things. So we'll go grab her and bring her back. Morrison. We'll bring him back to Morrison. I will I will never use any of the names of these Moogles again, aside from Mog, so... The Eidolon Mall is a collection of paintings. Some are try painting all the Eidolons they found. This is a holy place for the Summoner tribe. There is one that they can't identify. They do identify Atomos and Bahamut. They're all around here. One of them looks like Rama. Now she's going to stay here and uh, contemplate Summoner Hood. Or why this place seems so familiar to her. Oh, and here we go. They named this world Gaia and considered Eidolon's guardians of the planet. Uh, the tribe migrated to this location 500 years ago, but now, hmm, lies in ruins. Who would name for the planet? I don't know if we got that. No, no, we did, we did, we did. Uh, when we talked to, uh, the doctor who knew Dagger, his name is escaping me right at this second, um, learned about Gaia from him. Oh, I love this mix-up. <laughs> Mistaking Kina for Kuja. Mog, don't ever... Oh my god, the the inverted don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. Don't ever come out, uh, come out when Kina is around. Aiko is now finding out that Kina can cook. So we are going to ask, uh, as Aiko, Kina for advice on cooking. Make this meal just that much better. I think that is the final crucial decision that we make. Uh, the last couple to sum them up, 11 people for dinner, don't add an oglop into the stew. Ask Kina for advice because Kina, for all the goofiness, they are fucking on point. They are experts. They are good at what they do. So yeah, haha, jokes and goofs, Kina's just some big weirdo, but 
They have an area of expertise and they are goddamn good at it. Only thing to do now is to cheap uh, to keep checking around town, which means trying to come back to the kitchen and finally after this third flash uh, to Ico. Uh, and with Kina's help and Vivi's, Vivi who lit the fires for them, help them get, a, uh, get it up to an acceptable temperature to cook everything for 11 people. We are now ready to eat our rock fist potato stew and this very good fish dish, this barbecued fish. It doesn't look like all the Moogles. Oh, you can see some of them up in the windows just watching the dinner conversation. I go as the last of her summoner tribe. Been living here since her grandpa died last year, so... Her grandpa died at five. She has had nobody else. A uh, natural disaster struck this village a long time ago. Doesn't remember uh, her mom or dad very well. Been told that when I turn 16, my body builds a resistance to summoning magic. I can leave the village with any idol on I want. <laughs> She's still hitting on Zidane. This is much better than the inverse, which I feel like a lot of JRPGs and anime go for, which is the other way around, and it's fucking horrifying and creepy. Here we go. How do you communicate without a horn? She asks to Dagger. Uh, that's one of the key revelations that we get. Also, revealing that she knows about uh, Lord Avon's plays, the kind of uh, William Shakespeare of Gaia. So the way that that breaks down is that you get way more dialogue out of the dinner sequence if you do the preparations for the food right and the dinner thus goes well. Uh, specifically, you learn more about like the horn communication. It's like her Eidolon antenna. Something that Garnet, apparently not being a, from around here, does not have. And also the reason that Iko knows this uh, Lord Avon quote from one of his plays is because sitting on her bookshelf is a first edition uh, of that play. So why would she have this 500 year old book? That's not even from this continent, as far as Dagger knows. That's something known to people of the Mist continent. So, some cross-pollination happening. Some cultural osmosis? We will learn so much more about the history of this world, and I'm very excited because we're getting into the meat of it in Disc 2. And we will get even further into it We'll actually be learning about the source of the mist uh, on this episode. And that is an important revelation for things to come. Here's the pot. I have to go grab that from the other room. That's why they wouldn't let me leave. Let me bring that back to Ico. We will be good to go. What the hell is this question? Do you know anything about the Aoife tree? Then we want to go there. It's sealed with an Eidolon. Uh, and Iko is not the one who sealed it. It all happened before I was born. They sealed an Eidolon that they failed to summon. An Eidolon they failed to summon. But they used the power of another Eidolon in order to seal it. That's how powerful it was. This failed summon. We ask Iko to break the seal, and she seems reluctant to go with them. So either way, we'll find another way. But that is what is waiting for us in the Aoife tree. Aoife. Or Aoife? Aoife? I don't know. It's a silly, dumb, fancy game. <laughs> I am, however, the worst about that. I'm the worst at reading capital uh, I's as L's. 
for whatever reason, it just never, ever registers in my brain. Like, remember a Laijutsu <laughs> in Bayonetta? That's still the worst one in the whole channel. That's the one that I cringe at the most. But yeah, the Ifa tree. It's the life tree. Leaf is fine. Uh, it's the, even though this came out in the year 2000, even now we know that the that big tree is called Yggdrasil in a JRPG is played out, so let's at least call it something else. Oh, and Zidane being so pure and so wholesome and so good. While Vivi continues to be my sweet, precious, anxious child. Who, despite how hard he tries, he he can't get his mind off of the Black Mages. The fact that he is artificially produced. Uh, and his very limited lifespan. And then... They're just going to kind of piss under the stars and just enjoy the good night pea shivers. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Glad Iko had her revelatory moment where, of course, she wants to follow Zidane and uh, help break the seal. Glad she had that moment before they started just pissing in tandem and possibly crossing streams. No second thoughts for that. <laughs> no second thoughts. She's gonna join in anyway, because of course she is. This is not a revelation. This is not groundbreaking. Of course she's joining us. Uh, so it's just further up the mountain path where we came from. So we'll go ahead and get going. I think she was mad. And notice how we have not gotten to save in this village full of Moogles? We won't either. Uh, you have to save directly outside of the town using the uh, Moogle flute. A flute, by the way, is Iko's weapon. Fitting. Uh, we're going to turn immediately 180 degrees around and go back into the town uh, to inject a little bit of capital into the town. Because we are good, wholesome capitalists here on this channel. <laughs> uh, eat the rich. Seize the means of production. Can we pick up... I would really like... No, you could probably only synthesize those. Medane's ring. At least for the time being at this point in the game. Uh... Mm. I think I'm good on softs, even though we'll be using a few. Yeah, no, I don't actually want to buy anything. Uh, it, se it seems like this Moogle really needs to pull himself up by the bootstraps. We are, however, going to use the one Medane's ring that we do have. Uh, I guess on Zidane. Doesn't really matter who we put it on. Does it? The Sapphire is for Fenrir. We also have the Phoenix Pinion, we, which we can equip on Ico as an accessory, and that gives it, uh, them access to Phoenix as a summon. And then we'll also be picking up one more Eidolon uh, before we get into the Aoife tree proper. And the reason that we put the Medane's Ring on Zidane is for the body temperature. Uh, passive, which will be irrelevant uh, towards the end of the episode. Uh, and this won't quite be where we backtrack to put the stones in uh, to the obelisk just yet. Instead, we're going to hook up north and then take this short walk to the tree. There's mist here, and it's emanating out from this brain-shaped tree. There's some kind of force field 
that's the seal. Uh, this song, though, pay attention to it, because I'm going to point something out about it. All right. Uh, this theme, on top of being very eerie, uh, very imposing, giving you a sense that you should not be here, that you're in a place you don't belong. Uh, this takes notes from the lunar theme in FF4. And we receive Ruby, which I think allows us to summon Carbuncle. And that was not the spell to break the seal. That was just for show. Fucking Iko. Iko is an underrated character, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, yeah, and you get those synths and the percussion kicking in. Oh, this is so good, this soundtrack. Uh, I should also mention at this point that uh, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, Nobuo uh, Uematsu uh, is currently in very poor health. Uh, so I just want to wish, and this, I don't know, uh, I want to wish them all the best. Uematsu and their work has been uh, an enormous part of my childhood. I've loved his work for, for so, 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 so long. Um... And OP continue he gets better and continues making like just incredibly poignant music. Uh, but it's not looking super good right now. Uh, he's put off all the work that he was doing indefinitely. So uh, nobody really knows the nature of, of what's wrong, which that's kind of worrying as well. Not to bring the the mood down too much, but I mean I've I've done FF6, FF8, and now FF9, and just non-stop, probably more than any other aspect of the game, gushed about the music and all of them. Uh, because it's so incredibly on point and touching and powerful at all times, so. Ooh. Did not mean to exit the Ifa tree. Yeah, I hope Uematsu recovers. And, uh, I hope they get better. But, moving along... Ooh, this act this background mod seems like it's doing a number on this part of the Ifa tree. I don't think it's quite supposed to look like this. By the way, that... Mmm... This should be something new. Uh, this background mod... That I've talked about before. Uh, in case you have forgotten, all it does is uh, clean up the backgrounds a little bit. Like, it's not really replacing anything or. Damn it, every time! At least this isn't like the, the exact fight before a boss, but still, uh, VD is not building that back up in time. I'm, I'm assuming they're about to hit Dagger as well and trigger her. <laughs> the fight just for that one-two punch of course uh, they are undead enemy types and the rule of thumb in all Final Fantasies is if they are undead you can one hit kill them uh, with any kind of healing spells you can damage them with cure and cura you can damage them with potions uh, and of course, you can kill with Phoenix Downs and with uh, with life spells. Phoenix Downs, I don't know if they if they instant kill everything. I think they drop anything that's undead to one life in this. But life, life will do the trick. Life will find a way to kill death, <laughs> undeath. Oh, hey, another new boy. Ah, uh, this, uh, this enemy, we can show off something else that's really, really cool. Which will go down to the softs. This is why I wanted to make sure that we had at least a, a decent stock before we left Medane. This boy's too soft to live. Uh, 
FF9 is either one of, or possibly, uh, the only Final Fantasy game where you can instant kill monsters with soft. Uh, it's a very small list of monsters that you can do that with. Works pretty well here, though. Uh, now, as for the dungeon itself, this is a surprisingly small dungeon for how important it is and how much foreshadowing actually goes on here uh, and how much exposition gets dumped in this dungeon. It's pretty small, it's pretty short, uh, and it's more or less a straight line. But we come out to this, uh, this disc-shaped platform. Uh, with a groove in the middle and another disc in that groove. And eh, nobody wants to touch. Nobody wants to touchy. Except Zidane. Now, the moment Zidane touches this, it starts glowing. This is worth keeping in mind. He gets on, elevator goes down. So no other party members touched it, so we can't ascertain whether or not it's reacting specifically to Zidane or just being touched. Uh, we will have to wait and see if anyone wants to maybe mess with some of the other platforms coming up later on. But this brings us down to an area, very dark area. Uh, where we just wind our way down these coiled, gnarled roots. And this darkness and this music really further reinforcing that we should not be here. Also, check this out. This is a very different looking treasure chest than what we're used to seeing. Unique treasure chest visual designs. And now, 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 now. Hmm. Check this out. It's so bright down here, I can barely see the bottom. Look at this spire. This place is extremely cool. But did you see Aiko just there? Uh, she got on the leaf and it didn't react at all. It didn't move when I got on. Why don't we all try getting on? Aiko, DV, Dagger, Zidane, last. Then it finally starts moving. I just imagine they would get thrown straight off, or at the very least, when it stops moving, they're all gone. Nope, it's actually the glowing powder that's, I don't know, accounting for the physical impossibility of this. It's all because of the magic green powder shield. <laughs> so, Mog, what do you feel inside the Aoife tree? Something exciting. Mog senses a lot of life beneath us. Moogles are fairies, so they sense life everywhere, but especially down here. Oh, and that's a little bit disappointing. Just the same monster that we've seen before. Evil Forest and Gargan Roo had unique monsters, too. If the mist comes from this tree, why does it only appear on Zidane's continent? Zidane's VBs and daggers, that is. And Kina's, Brea's, everyone else's. So before we move along, let's just heal everybody up. Make sure everyone is down for the task uh, ahead. 
Don't have too much of the Aoife tree left. Told you, it's, it's not very long. And we've already gotten a decent amount of foreshadowing, too. Been thinking about the mist. Do you remember the factory we saw in, Do in Dolly? Hmm. The factory had a lot of mist inside, right? It was a huge machine filled with mist, and there were those strange eggs. There's gotta be a connection between the mist, Kuja, and the black mages. And Aiko, who has not been party for any of this, is super confused by all of it. Oh, cool. This new boy. This new dragon boy, who is a Draco zombie, which means... Doesn't matter how badass it is, it's not more badass than life itself. Bye. It just gets smoked by a life cast. Now that we battled that on our leaf elevator platform, uh, we can finally see the bottom, or at least mm, near the bottom. Because look at this. Mm, it's so cool. You know what I... <laughs> I feel... Every single episode of this LP, just an unbearable happiness. This big, stupid banana grin. Just total fucking wholesome happiness. I love old Final Fantasy so much. I am gonna smirch this a little bit by pointing out this looks a little bit like the sword that uh, Sargeras plunges into Silithus. <laughs> Just a little bit. Also, that is a super sneaky chest. And if we had not found that, we would have to spend a long time trying to steal that from an upcoming boss. Uh, but now that we found that, there is nothing actually worth stealing from said boss. I would love to hear what you all think this might be. Because visually it's a little bit hard to put together, but it is very cool. <laughs> yeah, I just, I play this, I get this, the biggest smile on my face all throughout, like, every episode. One more thing to investigate back here. So much for Kuja, none of his lackeys are here either. Yeah, maybe we have to go further down. Our third pan down this structure. It looks like a harp. I wonder if the harp in, in uh, Clara is modeled after this by chance. Ah, uh, there's something coming from above, though. Let's startled dagger. Everyone's thinking it might be Kuja. And we do have our boss by music going. What was that? Yeah, I'm so on board with dagger right there. Who this? Who's this boy? That was this thing communicating telepathically, saying so it wasn't Kuja. That's this monster referencing Kuja. Are you the one who makes the miss? It is not produced. It's a byproduct of the refining process discharged through the roots. So this tree has roots everywhere. It's the Yggdras uh, Yggdrasil. I contaminate the other continents with mist. Insights, everyone, leads to wars and the fall of civilizations. Kuja merely puts the byproduct, the mist, to a different use. 
Could you use the waste product to make weapons? Weapons like yourself, Vivi. I love that Aiko is the first one to be like, hey, I want to kill it. This thing sucks, I want to kill it. Defeat me, no more mist will flow, and no more weapons like this puppet will be made. And now everyone wants to kill it. So the Soul Cage's purpose is laid bare. It's to disperse mist, which incites people to fight. Or rather, it is the mist is a byproduct of what it disperses to get people to fight. Kinda it's 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 a bit more complicated than that, but we'll learn more in a little bit. The why and the how is also important here. Why is it doing this? How to get here? Who planted it? If anyone. We will get those answers. But hey, we learned a bit about the mist. And now it's time for a fight. Soul Cage has a level 5 death. He will cast at some point soon. Uh, and that's not his only instant kill either. He's a spell called Mustard Gas. Which inflicts a status that I think first showed up in Final Fantasy VI. It's, uh... Remember Edgar had a weapon that inflicted it? It's called the Heat. It's basically... There it is. Well, I hope... Good. That Zidane is the only one who is... Hit by this. So far, so good. Uh, yeah. So, in, in VI, it was like a two-turn Doom... In FF9 here, uh, heat will cause uh, cause you to die if you take an action while afflicted with it. Uh, what I forgot is that you can cure it with ice and water magic cast on whoever is afflicted, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool counter. Uh, alternatively, uh, I did put Medane's ring on Zidane to give him access to the body temperature passive, which prevents him. Every status effect has something that counters it, like that antibody, body temp, uh, insomniac, loudmouth, all this. However, since he is stricken by death, and is not getting a good opportunity to rise back up without being instantly killed again, he's just gonna have to stay on the floor, and remember the real trick, as always, because it is undead, the real trick is to one-shot him with life. <laughs> just cheese him on out. But you saw how the fight goes. It's just, you know, a lot of mustard gas and leaf swirl. The only other thing to note is, uh... If you attack him with fire, which you would think would be a natural counter against him... I think he is weak to it. Uh, the only problem with doing that is he will immediately counterattack if you use fire magic against him. Or uh, anything that does fire damage, like the Phoenix Eidolon. We just stopped the production of Mist. That changes the math on a lot of things back on the... Mm -hmm. I guess we're still calling it the Mist continent. <laughs> Why suddenly am I just getting a bunch of mist puns popping into my head? Like, mist connections, that's not anything. Now I'm thinking of Mr. Mister from, uh... Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> Great. Lovely. When he gets pissed, you get missed. Oh, this is the best I go reassuring Vivi that the other black mages won't be... Furious with him for ending the mist and thus the ability to produce more black mages. Apparently, some kind of emergency has popped up back in Medane. Someone stole something precious. So Aiko's gonna go back there. Uh, she invites the rest of the party to stay here and wait for Kuja, but 
they're not having it. They're going to go back with her. So that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.